Yeah, I like the scale. The scale is, it works so well. I mean, yeah, it does. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better sighting, really. I mean, it's in front of a Arthur Erickson 50s building in Cornelia Overlander landscape. I mean, it, it works so well. I mean, and I think it complements their work, too. You know, it brings it to life in more ways than one. The piece was originally installed in 1987 outside the power plant, mm -hmm. Contemporary Art Gallery, and it was installed in a garden. Mm -hmm. Well, there wasn't much of a garden there. Well, it was a little bit bad planting. Sort of, but it, it basically was kind of bare um, lawn kind of thing. Um, yeah, and they, they uh, it has two, uh, uh, two uh, pipes coming out of the right. front of it, so which anchor it like prongs, which anchor it into the ground, and that's what they did. I think they put some bigger pipes into the ground and then put these two into the into those pipes. And was that the in initial site for it? Is that... Uh, that was the initial site. They planned for it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not quite sure <coughs> when they planned that, uh, you know, before or, or when the thing arrived or whatever. Um, and, it, of course, you could see the, wa the water fronts right there. Right. So you could see the water, too. Um, I always intended it. I intended it to be eventually in in water, right. like like it is now. Right. That was always my intention. And probably the the best impact was maybe from inside the gallery looking out, because then you'd have mm -hmm. the the boat there, and yeah. then you'd have the water, the water in the water distance and other boats. Yeah, that was yeah. the that was the plan. Yeah. Um, and do you know why you chose marble as the material? Um. Well, when I do work, work I like to um, I like to create uh, a contrast between things. You know, work within a, a contrasting thing to um, which can sometimes provide a, a uh, kind of dichotomy or something like that, or um, give rise to uh, even you know absurdity or or. Um, um, what do you call it when something is opposite to uh, anyway? Like a juxtaposition. Just yeah, it can be. It could be a juxtaposition. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, you know, the way that we've really been talking about it is, it's like there is this kind of juxtaposition between the material and right. the, the shape of the object itself. Well, it's modeled on a. To uh, I I did it. I made a drawing basically. Uh, that's how it arrived, and it's actually a. A, a drawing of a toy boat, right. the wooden toy boat. Like uh, <clears throat> you see, small wooden toy boats, which are exactly like that. Basically, a kind of a more primitive one. Right, right. I mean, they've gotten a bit more fancy now, but the the kind of archetypal one that you find in wooden toys. I mean, there are a number of things which like. And like they're like blocks solid blocks of wood. Really. That's right, yeah. solid blocks of wood. So I thought, well, I'd make it in in marble to give it like monumental kind of right. uh, feel to it. And that would contrast with the idea of a toy boat, right, <clears throat> being bigger. So it, you immediately have a conflict there between the two kinds of things. Um, I wanted to play with that, and then by having it up, tipped up on its on its end like that, it, that's really absurd. I mean, it's kind of hilarious, in fact, you know, especially if it, once it's installed, because it's such a heavy material. Right. <clears throat> I mean, it would immediately if you put it in water without. Uh, you know, any support, it would sink. <laughs> and so it's poised there, ready to sink, but it doesn't sink. And again, it's like that contrast. So it, it creates this um, tension, I guess, as well, and on kind of levels. I like to, f I like to fill <coughs> ideas with as many references as I can. Um, and so that people have you know, when they see something, they can. Uh, it might trigger off uh, something, something else. You know, like give lo lots of. I like to pack it with, uh, with lots of references if possible, as many as I can think of. You know? Yeah, and I think there's a, a relationship between drama and humor in this as well, because yeah. it is that that kind of poised mm -hmm. moment and that heavy, heavy material. Right. And it's a toy mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, well, it's like a toy. It's like a toy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's based on a toy. So, if you like, sculpturally, it's also it's it works as sculpture 
when you walk around it because right. it really changes and when you're like face on to it mm -hmm. it has this really interesting almost abstract composition to it right um, so did you alter the original design of the toy boat or is it no I think it, uh, I mean I can't remember <laughs> if I actually had a toy boat that I was measuring uh, or not I think I might have uh, I don't know where that is now I have a collection of wooden toys um, or I had a collection of wooden toys I've got a wooden um, airplane actually a double wing to airplane which I like very much um, I still have that but I must have some others around I've got several canoes uh, and I think there was I don't know if I had a, I think I had a truck too at one time yeah a wooden truck yeah wooden well, trucks are popular I think I still yeah. might have some of that I uh, have that it might be in one of my other sculptures I have a, some small box sculptures which are full of various things um, I don't think you've seen them probably I don't think so they're quite early yeah and how did you come to um decide upon this particular site? Oh, this particular site? Um, well, I, I knew of it from the, from the 70s. Um, and um, I don't know. I, I, I think I almost made it for that site. Uh, but that's really hard for me to remember um, if I did that. Do we know when, I that, when that building was built? I believe it was 19, in the late 50. 1950s. No, yeah. the Lacerre, but the Arthur Erickson edition. No, uh, Lacerre was 19. I don't know when the edition was made. And then I don't, yeah, and I don't know if Cornelia, Cornelia's garden was altered when the edition. No, sorry, Cornelia did the edition with, with the with Erickson. With Arthur, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would be my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly... Um, I, I guess I've looked at it a number of times and I can't remember exactly when I thought that that would be a good place for it because the boat after it was in storage for many for a number of years in Toronto and it was costing me like five thousand dollars a year or something to store it uh, it was ridiculous you know like I mean and so I finally had it trucked out to here and I, by that time um, I was living up the coast in, in uh, Roberts Creek and so I put it in the front yard, <laughs> covered it up with a tarp, and it was there for many years, you know, like moldering under, under the uh, tarp. Um, oh, and it, and it suffered a bit of damage in Toronto when it was, it was they, wanted, they asked to leave it out over the winter, too. Right. And it froze, of course, the, it freezes there. And I think the water, probably there was water in the very tip of it or something, and that kind of broke off or something like that, but we've, we, that's been repaired. I mean, it's kind of a cosmetic thing. Um, and uh, so I can't remember. I mean, I knew of that pond there. I mean, I mean I've been to dinner and I've been to that building many, many times and seen the pond, right? And I think at some point I thought, oh, that would be a great place to put my my boat. Is this before the Belkin purchased it? Or? I think so. Yeah. I think uh, it, either then or after, but uh, but... Over over that space of time, it was a it was a site that I I had my eye on in a sense for the boat, uh, but I can't remember when it was that I asked for that. I mean, I at one point after it was bought, then um, Scott and I he asked, well, where do you think would be a good site for it? And he proposed a number. I said, well, I want it in a pond, and so he suggested various things, and that was one of them. There, there's also the, um, I haven't brought it up particularly, but, uh, you know, there's a question about, uh, it's kind of a, a critique of modernism in some ways, too. I mean, the, the whole building and the, uh, and the funny thing is that um, toy boats look modernist in a certain way, you know, and not because they've set out to be modernist, but because of the way they're made, the simplicity of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's kind of a coincidence there in that sense and the fact that it's like tipped up and sinking or something you know that kind of thing so you know there's there's kind of an art history reference there too and also the idea of the class classic um, classism the marble mm -hmm. uh, but that's more of a sculpture reference in a certain sense you know as a kind of material mm -hmm. I guess or something mm -hmm. so the, the, that's what I was mentioning earlier about uh, packing it with some uh, references and things like that mm -hmm. 
So it, I think it does that as well, you know. Well, that's the kind it, of tragic part of it. Yeah, I think it, it uh, does that. I mean, that's why I sort of brought up it's very minimal. It has this minimalist mm -hmm. aesthetic to it and this sense of, uh, you can see like this abstract mm -hmm. kind of composition right. with it when you see it from certain mm -hmm. vantage points. Sometimes it reads as a boat, especially from the side, but if you go right up to the front, it really reads as this kind of Yeah, composition. or the back is just yeah. a, a flat, kind of planular yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe one day it'll fall, fall into the pond and sink. Or maybe just have the, the funnel up above the water. <laughs> you would like that. <laughs>